I've finally decided to cover a score by Jerry Goldsmith, one of my all-time favorite composers and one of the all-time greats of the medium. His musical style is widely versatile, but very recognizable. Many of you probably already know Goldsmith's scores for Alien, Star Trek The Motion Picture, or The Omen. But his most formative years in film scoring during the 60s contain some of his most inventive music, such as in Studs Lonegan, and Planet of the Apes. On this episode, I'll be talking about a somewhat obscure thriller from 1965, The Satan Bug. Based on a book by Alastair MacLean, the film concerns a secret biological warfare base that has had vials of deadly viruses stolen from it, including the titular Satan Bug, which could swiftly exterminate life on Earth if opened. Much intrigue and chasing ensues, it's a solid thriller and well worth a look. But of course, much of that is due to Mr. Goldsmith. Rising to the occasion with his usual ingenuity, Jerry Goldsmith wrote a score laced with modern stylings, as he did much of over his career, often inspired by Stravinsky. This was the time when more avant-garde approaches to film scoring were gaining prominence in movies, such as with Leonard Rosenman, who had written the first serialist film score for The Cobweb. By serialism, I mean each row has a set number of pitches which the music must follow. This can also be a tone row, where a whole scale is played without repeating a note. I think Goldsmith found a good balance between serial composing and a traditional harmonic scoring. And despite how atonal the music may seem, there are motifs still present, such as the main three-note theme. but the strange menace of the music adds to the tremendous action cues. Not to mention some great percussion effects along with Novacord and Solovox electronic keyboards that represent the intrigue. It's also another fine example of how Goldsmith could score dialogue and give it impact, just as well as he could with action scenes. If you are interested enough in the score to seek it out, bear in mind that the only release is an archival edition for a reason. Only about half of the master recordings still exist, the rest were likely thrown out when the Mirish Corporation, which produced the film, was cleaning house. Fortunately, movie prop collector Bob Burns' wife was given a box of scripts and photos that just happened to contain some of the master tapes, which sound absolutely pristine. Unfortunately, none of the action cues or the main title were on these, so Film Score Monthly integrated a souped-up music and effects track to fill in the rest. It's a bittersweet tale, not uncommon in Film Score archiving. That's why some of the samples I will provide still have sound effects. Right off the bat, the movie leaves a lasting impact with a dark main title, the first cue I'm highlighting. The animation done by Depati Freelang Studios only enhances the strangeness and unease by showing a stylized body succumbing to the virus. Goldsmith's music complements this with astounding variety. There's low lumbering bass, along with agitated pecking xylophones on top, as well as the clicking of a jawbone instrument for macabre effect. The title motif is repeated twice in between rising brass. Aside from the technical aspects, it's an unforgettable and gripping piece of cinema in itself.
the getaway is the second highlighted cue, and it demonstrates Goldsmith's fantastic command of the orchestra. The main characters, Lee and his romantic interest, Anne, have been kidnapped by the thieves who took the Satan bug. The cue maintains suspense and some anticipation through the various percussion, until Lee and Anne take an opportunity to attempt escape. It's no wonder Goldsmith became the action composer for the 80s and 90s. Instant Death is one of the best cues of the score. Lee and two agents, one of them a pre-Star Trek James Doohan, have been trapped in an abandoned gas station by the thieves, one of which is about to throw a bottle of another deadly bio-war agent inside. <laughs> How Goldsmith portrays the effects of the botulinus germ is impressively effective. It's not surprising that the film has lived on beyond obscurity, and how the score has become somewhat legendary. It'd be nice if somehow a re-recorded version of the missing tapes was made, but what we have now is enough to appreciate one of Jerry Goldsmith's early masterpieces. Thanks for watching, and you'll hear from me in the next episode.